How should I draft if I pick in the top three or top four? How should I draft if I pick it in the 12th spot and I'm at the turn? Do I reach for guys? Do I try and play some ADP games and hope that players that I want fall to me again in the third round? We got a lot lined up for you today. Alex and I are going to be giving you our draft strategy for this season. We're going to be talking about when you should pivot between positions where we see the most value throughout this season's draft. Stay with us. We're going to mock it all out and show you how the values at position change through the draft. Let's go. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Crow. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos back at it again. What's up, party people? What is this? Ep- We're past drinking age now. I don't know what our next major milestone episode is. 25, 50, 2 million, but episode 22 on tap for today. We are, we're talking some draft strategy, and uh, then we're going to be mocking along to it, I guess, as we give our, give some draft advice. Um, Jason Shellcross here, Alex Krogh, back again, Fantasy Football Sackos. Alex, how you doing, buddy? It's been, been four or five days. I'm good. Um, I don't don't really have anything to say. I don't know. I, I'm just. Like life is going on and it's going by quick and I've adjusted to not sleeping for more than three and a half, four hours at a time. And it just is great. How are you? Good, man. I'm living L I V I N living. Uh, I don't know. Just enjoying the end of summer, seeing family, doing a little bit of writing on the side um everybody please hurry run pause the episode right now go to the fantasyfootballsackos.com i put a new article out on why i think Josh Jacobs could be a potential uh ultimate draft value for this upcoming season ESPN ESPN average draft position is currently 24th overall 24th overall. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Josh Jacobs currently going on ESPN as the 24th drafted running back. Uh, or I'm sorry, 24th overall drafted player, 13th running back off the board. Uh, on Yahoo, he's going as the 13th running back off the board, 21st overall. So a little bit more respect for Jacobs on Yahoo than ESPN, but either way, completely disrespectful. His ADP is a lot higher on Sleeper. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, some ADPs and whatnot later. Um, however, I will say, as as for, if people don't know that you can go or, or Google like ESPN current average draft positions, like and get all of them up to the minute. Like ESPN keeps all the keeps all that information and pushes it out. And I think our next podcast, we're going to be going through current ADPs, and we're going to be talking about some ADPs that we find incredibly appealing and uh, really present some mid and late round targets that we haven't really talked about yet because now we know where they're actually being drafted on, you know, platforms that people use and not just sleeper, which I think is one of a more of a smaller niche kind of a uh, program. So what did we start saying niche? I don't know. Cause it rhymes with like, quiche. It's, yeah. Isn't it niche? I don't, I don't understand why that, why that ever changed. Like, like people started saying like amateur instead of amateur. Like what like what the hell? Am I the pretentious like one on the podcast? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just asking. Like I just don't when people don't say know. niche, I'm like, I'm like, that's it's I, niche. Why is that a what it's a niche. I, I don't know. Sorry. No, but the the <laughs> the like when you said type in ESPN current draft ADP or type in fantasy football draft trends or whatever, and I looked at it, I was like, holy crap, I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, sure so I, enough. You know, it, it has the ADPs. And for those of you, and I wish I wasn't saying this for some of my family that's listening for our first auction league this year. Yes. But there's even, but there's even a salary cap draft um, stat um, number in there too. 
So it, it kind of says where, where the trends are going and it's interesting. So I would definitely check it out. Um, I was thoroughly entertained and um, somewhat flabbergasted by uh, where some people are going. So this is a mock draft and it's obviously a mock snake. Um, if I, however, if I had one piece of advice for those uh, participating in auction drafts, it would be to not pay the outrageous auction fee that you have to if you want to land Christian McCaffrey. What did we talk about before the show? You could get like uh, Todd Gurley, Josh Jacobs, and David Johnson all for the combined low, low price of one Christian McCaffrey or something obscene. Like, yeah. And, but so that's the thing is do, you know, drive up the prices for other people, but don't, don't, don't get them. Yeah. But studs generally win you titles though too and so it comes down like you have to spend all your money on something yeah. so if, if you're gonna get three players for the price of one then you should be able to spend somewhere else that you know if, if you're gonna let's say you go cheap on running backs you should you know definitely set a hey i'm planning on spending this much on this player and or on this position and this is who i can yeah. slot in there and kind of have it mapped out as far as like what your targets are um you know have little windows of hey i'm planning on getting this running back for this price okay well who falls in that general area no you know have like a th- uh, an order of preferred of i want this you know one through three one through five and then once you get one of them, you can kind of scratch that position off unless things just get to be too good to be true for for some other things. So, yeah, I mean, you should be able to map out exactly who you want on your team with the amount of dollars that you're provided. And it sh- shouldn't be all that difficult. But the only yeah, last piece of yeah. advice I would say is also don't fall in love and tell yourself that you have to land any one player, even if you spend a bunch of time bidding on them, to try and get them like let them go. If the if the price gets too high, let them go. Yeah, but I I really want to pay like eighty five dollars for Lamar Jackson. There you go. worth every nickel. All right, let's get into some strategy mock drafting, and we're gonna see. We're going to see if I was able to talk Alex into any of my strategy for this season. Zum, 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 zum. Mock mock baby. Uh, Alex and I usually, uh, or I guess we'll continue to assign each other positions or, or draft positions. Alex, I'll let you go first. Where do you want me to pick tonight? So you picked fifth the last time we did this. Yeah, it together. was awful. Uh, Please don't put I me in the middle. Ninth. I don't know where you picked on your solo episode, your Sacabation uh, episode of mocking. Uh-huh. Um, do you have any? It was later, wasn't it? I think it was in the back five. I think it was either eight. It was somewhere between eight and 12. I want to say it was nine or 10. All right. I'll give you two. Oh, so generous. Wonderful. All right. I am going to be uh, drafting at second overall. I'm going to. Well, I don't know. You're going to like it, but um, it's going to be difficult. And there will be no ADP games involved, Alex, because I'm putting you at 12. You get to draft the turn. All right, cool. I'm game with that. So um, I guess general strategy for me, like if I'm if you're picking in the top, I think four, it's pretty much a slam dunk. You're going to go running back. I would say five um, as well. Um, I really like Kamara this season. I think he's a lock. Uh, to ha- to have a really good year, um, but I guess and the reason for that is be well. I would say because he said he tore his knee last year, right? That's one yeah, of the he tore his MCL. He played out. through it. He only missed like one or two games, and that was the only games. It was like something about how uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm speaking off the cuff here. Lat Murray, I think, I had like three touchdowns, and two out of three came in like the one or two weeks that Kamara was out. Out, and so there was much made about. Lat Murray potentially ball hawking some touchdowns from Kamara, but really it was because he was out and injured. So, yeah, he averaged five yards of carry after tearing his MCL. He's okay at football. Um, I think he's pretty fast. I guess I want to talk about, given that I am picking in the top three or four, like nobody's, we haven't really talked about what we would do in this situation. 
A lot of people out there are going to hate this, and it's my personal preference, but I'm really steering because of because it's a COVID year and there's so much uncertainty built into fantasy football and football in general because of that. I'm looking for like familiar faces in familiar places. Like I want consistency and I want to try and like mitigate the risk as much as I can, especially in early round picks. And so yep. Christian McCaffrey does not really appeal to me, given the fact that he is a brand new first time ever NFL head coach in Matt rule and a new quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. Granted, I think Teddy could be like a sleeper breakout candidate at quarterback this season. Um, I think he's actually good at football. Uh, it's just new coach, new system, new everything on a COVID season with he, like no preseason to actually learn anything. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of struggled out of the gate. Um, can, can I hop in real quick on Teddy Bridgewater? Uh, yeah, sure. What do you got? H- have you ever seen the picture of him at Louisville? Is there like the picture? I, I don't know what the picture is that you're talking about. So like, you know how they call like Nick Foles big dick Nick? Oh, yeah. Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, he's packing heat. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying, if you haven't seen the picture of him at Louisville, just type in like Teddy Bridgewater Louisville. And um, I was literally about yeah. to say I'm going to post it up for everybody on YouTube watching this on YouTube, but I'm probably not going to include that. So, <clears throat> no, you probably don't want to. But I'm just saying, like, you're wow. you are impressed. All right. Well, now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> Lord be. You're welcome. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, Saquon went at one. I think my safest player is still on the board. If you're picking the, if I'm picking in the first round, the player I want the most is Zeke. Cause I think he's the safest at the position. Bum, bum, bum. There goes Michael Thomas for you and running backs. Tyree kill. You're going to lose some receivers. There goes Josh Jacobs, Devonte Adams, Joe Mixon. So you're got, You got a lot of fun stuff staring you in the face. Alex, what are you thinking about doing here at the turn? Right. Yeah. If you're in a league where Christian McCaffrey goes fourth, I feel like if you're fourth, you're probably sitting pretty happy. But I mean, you just kind of laid out the reason why, why he could fall to fourth. Um, You know, Saquon can go crazy. You're partial to Zeke just because you are Alvin Kamara could be great this year. And so, I mean, you don't like, that's the thing with taking in the top four, and I know maybe you're alluding to this. You got to take the guy that you want, and you don't want to take the guy that you're forced taking. Like last year, I thought I was forced to take Barkley, and I hated doing it, and I had to do it in two leagues. So, like, you know, instead of you saying, hey, I'm taking Christian McCaffrey if he's there because everybody's taking Christian McCaffrey, like, you should just stick to who you want. Yeah. Now, who am I looking at here? Uh, it's a great question. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is there, um, who is kind of a, a dart throw, but has the highest upside of pretty much ever anybody here. Probably. Could I would say it's probably the, certainly the best offense. As far as if you're looking at running back, he's probably on the best offense out of those that are left. Right. So, I mean, Mahomes Miles is there Sanders, too. Yeah. So I could go Holaire and Mahomes. Well, and you pick back to back here. Correct. And just say, hey, I'm just going all in on what I think is going to be the best offense in football this year. Also, Lamar Jackson sitting there, too. So, you know, it just kind of depends if it's a four point um, touchdown league. I would take Jackson. If it's six, I'm taking Mahomes. Um, Julio's there, who we've talked about as, um, you know, being one of those top five guys every year. Um, I would have taken Devontae Adams over him, but he is gone. Um, I, I'm not super thrilled with anybody that's here, honestly. Um, so I, I hate you for putting me here. Well, the thing, the reason I put you here is because we've, we've drafted, none of, neither of us have drafted at the end of a round, either at the one or the 12 spot yet. And I just want to get it out there for everybody that's like watching or listening. If you're drafting at either end of the turn, there is no ADP games. You literally have to take the players that you want. And sure, some of them are probably going to be called reaches, but you cannot let what uh, 11, 22 picks go by before you pick again and hope a guy's there. Like you have to make a pick. Nope. So yeah, and I'm stuck and I don't like, 
I don't feel like there's value really here for anybody because I, I would have taken everybody in front of who's left. Uh, I don't really want Miles Sanders, um, even though Doug Peterson has come out in recent days saying he's the, the three down guy. Yeah. He also came out and said, we're going to get Bart Scott more carries like a week ago. So like <laughs> Boston Scott, but yeah, call him Bart. Boston that's even, Bart that's Scott. Better. Who the hell's Bart Scott? Um, <laughs> come on, man, kid. I don't Where, where am I? Dad brain. Go um, on. So, I mean, I'm probably, I'm going to take Julio first, um, here just to, to guarantee that in. And then, uh, I'm going to take Clyde Edwards Hilaire on the back side of it, just cause I know neither of those guys are going to be there. Um, see the best part about I, that is as soon as it was your pick, I could have told you that's who you were going to take those two guys. Yeah, absolutely. Without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. Uh, for me here, this is pretty simple. Lamar is there. He shouldn't be there at the end of the second round. I'm going to take Lamar for the first pick. And then I'm probably given how much receiver value there is in the fourth and fifth rounds. I have no problem. I mean, would I like to take Mike Evans here in the third? Yes. Would I like to take Thielen here? Yes. Like, I think that those guys are absolutely, you know, could have great seasons. Um, there's just so much value later on at receiver that I'm just not, I'm not feeling the pressure to go receiver yet, even though I have to this, you know, this far I've punted. Would you have taken Lamar or Kelsey there where I just picked? It's a good question. Um, I probably would have taken Lamar. Yeah. Um, it, it, I think, you know, because we don't actually know the person that's picking, um, for your ADP game, if they would never have taken Lamar there, I probably would have taken Kelsey. Gotcha. Um, so it's another one of those things where you kind of have to try to know know the person that's there, and if they're usually waiting on quarterback. Yeah, I almost um, with with Kelsey being gone. So the two picks that the two people that went in between my picks were Travis Kelsey and Godwin. And uh, man, if Godwin was sitting there, if either one of those guys was sitting there, they'd probably be my pick right here. But alas, they are not. And so yep. here I am. Uh, let's look at these running backs. James Conner, Chris Carson. And this is the second pick in the third round. James Conner, Chris Carson, like great running back value there. Um, I mean, I have James Conner ranked inside my top 10. I'm going to go Conner there just because, again, we keep talking about how much receiver value there is in the mid rounds. Like it just blows my mind how much receiver value there is. So. I'm going to throw up because pretty much every player that I would have taken has gone again. And this end around thing is just crushing. Oh, me. come on. You know, you're drafting Cooper cup here. Like, you know that you're drafting Cooper cup here. Probably. I bet you go cup girly. No, you're wrong. I'm going to go cup. Um, but I juju cup juju. No, just no, no. So Zach hurts. No, I'm not taking tight. Like I'm just going to wait on tight end. I think this year I don't, unless, you know, I'm in the back half of the second round and I can get Kittle or Kelsey. I think I'm just going to wait and, and hopefully try to find a, my, my Hayden Hurst Helmsley late, um, and, and figure that, that thing out. I, so to your point, and I guess I learned this by listening to your solo, draft but it's just like I came into this trying to just take running backs because I thought I could get the wide receivers that I wanted later and I'm sitting here at pick 36 and the running backs left are Gurley, Ingram, Devin Singletary, Jonathan Taylor, Mostert, Kareem Hunt, DeAndre Swift and Ronald Jones. That's a very unappealing group. Um, it's your second running, running back, back though. I feel like these are not awful second running backs by any stretch. Yeah, that's probably true, but I might, would have much rather had Fournette. Uh, I would have definitely taken David Johnson. I would have taken Montgomery, I think. Um, yeah, I do. I do love Gurley, but if, if I have Julio Jones, I don't know if I can have Gurley on the same team. I, I try to not stack running backs and wide receivers on the same team together. Um, quarterback wide receiver. Yes. But running back wide receiver. No. Um, 
so I, I guess I'm just going to stay on the wide receiver train. Uh, I'll take Cooper Cup first, and then um, well, just because I think that yeah, go ahead. J- j- just because I think the targets are going to be there, I'm going to take Allen Robinson just because I feel like he's got a higher floor than some of these other guys that are around here. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you picked at pick 36, and right now in ESPN leagues, David Johnson is going as the 40th player overall. So. Again, like in ESPN leagues, there's a very good chance that David Johnson is sitting there at the end of round three, which is, ex- again, it's just extreme value. Yep. Um, now, I, again, I, 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 you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Um, if you're listening, my first three picks were, and I'm picking, I picked second overall. I picked Zeke as the second pick. In the first round, I pick Lamar Jackson as the 11th pick in the second. And then I on the back around in the third, I pick James Conner. I mean, for, for, for me here, punting on receiver to the fourth round, not an issue at all. Like, no, nope. look at this. I, I have DJ Moore staring me in the face who I think could be a top 12 guy. Like, I'm taking DJ Moore there, and then I'm hoping Bob Woods makes it back to me. The two picks that went between were Raheem Mostert and T.Y. Hilton. There's Bob Woods staring me in the face. However, what's up, Zach Ertz? Like, what is that Zach Ertz value? Do you take Zach Ertz here, or do you take Bob Woods? I would take Zach Ertz. Yeah, I'd pass on Bobby Trees and just hope for something down the line. Bobby Trees. (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah i think so because we've talked about it the wide receiver values there later so why why would you not go ahead and just lock in lock in Ertz? and we've talked God, about your team yeah. is nasty i i i'm really liking how this is shaping up so far and i don't i really i don't advocate for taking both a quarterback and a tight end in the first six picks because i think it can leave you thin at running back and wide receiver but I think if you go running back early, there's just still so much receiver value that I think you'll be fine. And I would still go does running that, back. Does heavy that like, change? Does that change a little bit in a COVID year though, too? Because it's maybe not so much about having the depth on your roster. Because I think you might be able to go and spend to get the depth. I, I think you want, like, my personal philosophy has always been try to get the best the best player you can at as many positions as you can. So like in your position there where you can take, you know, probably lock in a top five tight end for sure. um, Because the fourth tight end going in this particular draft, but it's like, if you can lock that in. So like you have Zeke lock in a top five running back, you have Lamar lock in a top five quarterback, you have Ertz lock in a top five tight end. That's already three positions that theoretically you don't really have to worry about. um, Which is always kind of nice, um, especially because you can draft like you can like the fun thing for me is if you lock in what you've done, you can start just taking random dart throws now at, at higher upside guys because you already have the guaranteed high upside in the players that you've already taken. Yeah, like some of those upside guys that I'm looking at and I'm hoping make it back to me are like Ronald Jones, J.K. Dobbins uh, with Chubbs. Uh, concussion announcement today. I would l- love a Kareem Hunt fall, but I don't think that'll happen. Um, Jordan Howard, I think, is absolutely solid as far as you know running backs that I like here. We've talked about staying away from DeAndre Swift. Um, Cam Akers is okay. I'd like it if he was a little bit lower uh, in sleeper ADP and more reflective of his ESPN ADP. But like, look at these receivers. Even if I come back, like I get Debo Samuel, who was a top 10 receiver in the second half of last season. Granted, he'll Mm -hmm. start the season on the pop, but like there's so much receiver value still that I I can get Michael Gallup. Like that's criminal him and Amari had basically the same stats and Amari got drafted in the third round. And I can get, I could yeah, potentially get Gallup in the sixth or seventh. So I'm fine at receiver still. See, I'm usually more of the guy that likes to draft later in drafts. And I don't think that's the case this year. I think you want to go as quickly as possible, lock in one of those top three to five guys from a running back perspective. And then the rest of your draft just kind of falls into place based, based on ADPs, the way that people are currently going. Um, I mean, you look at Jason's 
uh, roster currently, Zeke, Lamar, James Conner, DJ Moore, Zach Ertz. And then you look at mine, Julio, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Cooper Cup, and Allen Robinson. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like there's, the, yeah. it's pretty clear whose roster you'd rather have. Um, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, there's wide receiver value. I would like Cortland Sutton or I would like Brandon Cooks here. Um, well, you already went receiver because there was receiver Stephon value Diggs. before. Right. But I already have three. So I so can't really do that no. because I'd be, I'd be drafting a bench spot. Right. And then I look, and then I look at running backs. It's Kareem Hunt, DeAndre Swift, Ronald Jones, who I'm probably going to take here because I don't like anybody else here. The quarterbacks, Russell Wilson and Prescott already went. I can wait for a while. And then tight end, Darren Waller, um, ADP 61. Um, I guess we're looking at pick 60 right now, so that's fine. Um, But for your fifth pick, like theoretically, if I'm going to take a tight end, I either need to take it here or I'm going to have to wait forever. Yeah, you're either Um, taking the wall burger or you're not. Yeah, because um, the seven teams after me are definitely going to take one in the next two rounds. So, I mean, I am just in a, I am in a shitty position, if I'm being <laughs> honest. I like uh, if, if this was if this was actually my draft in one of my leagues, I would be like, <laughs> oh, shit. You'd have about two or three of them. Uh, Captain Morgan's right about now. Yeah. It would be bad. Like, this is not good. I, I don't like anything about this at all. Um, so please don't let me pick 12th, I guess. Um, so I, I guess I'll force myself to take Darren Waller. Yeah, he wouldn't um, be there on the way back anyways. Like, he's not going to be there in the seventh. So, and then I, when we all know you're taking Ronnie Jones. Correct. There it is. And I'm going to take Ronald Jones just because we've talked him up. And if he's the guy there, then he's a, uh, he's a, uh, for me, potentially an RB one. Yeah. I mean, high, honestly, high side. honestly though, like that, that round could not have gone any better for you because between Zach Ertz at the second pick in that round and your pick at 12th, no running backs outs. went right. It was all wide outs and Russell Wilson and Dak. So like, that running back value, I don't, I don't, I can't believe that more running backs didn't go, and I can't believe that like Ronald Jones fell that far. Yeah, if right, if, if you got lucky the, that he was there at the end of the fifth, early sixth, um, right? If he wasn't there, I would be totally effed. You would still be talking about who you might draft. <laughs> yeah, because I, I wouldn't, I would. I mean, we're we currently have a four hour countdown clock. Uh, for sake of this draft, I might talk out the entire four hours and just let it auto pick for me. Yeah. Um, JK Dobbins or Jordan Howard? What do you think? Um, I mean, me personally, I think you got to go with Howard just because he's more proven. He's not a rookie. He's not, he's not going to split time or be a change of pace. He, well, I mean, he will split maybe a little bit of time with the bread man, but, um, he's definitely not a, like, Dobbins I just meant that he's the, the early down work instead of just like no, clearly yeah, a change you. of pace guy. Right, with Dobbins, he's what the third choice on that team to run the ball down by the goal line between Lamar's going one and, and Ingram's going second. Yeah. Yeah. Now here, Devontae, Brandon Cooks, Debo Samuel, Will Fuller, Julian Edelman, Jarvis Landry, Tyler Boyd, Marvin Jones, and then so forth. Uh bummed Gallup actually didn't make it back to me there. I would have loved Gallup in the sixth, but alas, it didn't happen. Honestly, what do I want to do here? To me, it's Cooks or Samuel. I yeah, I don't feel like there's any running back value here. Um, no, I. it would be. I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I, and I have three already and I only have one receiver. Like I need to go receiver here. But I'm going to go. Do I go Debo and just, yeah, I'm doing Debo. And they lost another guy to a knee injury that's now out for the season. So when Debo does come back, he's the man at receiver. Yeah, uh, I was hoping that Matt Ryan was going to fall to me to pair him with Julio. And he went two picks after you, which is slightly unfortunate. Because um, at some point, I'm going to have to pull the trigger on a 
quarterback. Um, Josh Allen, I mean, he perennially finishes as a QB1 because of the rushing yards. Um, We've talked about how we don't really like their schedule. Um, Well, we don't like the end of their schedule, but their schedule... He might get you to the playoffs, though, right? Their schedule coming out of the gate is gross. They have the Jets at home, uh, at Miami, the Rams at home, which is not scary, and then at the Las Vegas Raiders, and then at the Titans at home against the Chiefs, and then at the Jets. Like those, those are not. That's not a scary schedule at all. I think yeah, Josh Allen uh, is going to be hot the first month. Yeah, but I don't like the fact that he has to play the Jets, the Patriots, and the Dolphins six times because um, I think all those defenses are going to be much improved. I know you crap on the Dolphins defense, but hey, everybody likes the Dolphin D, so um, you just got to kind of roll with them. You're welcome for that one. Um, So I don't know. I don't know. Like, again, I think Brandon Cooks is the best player here, and then I think uh, Tyler Boyd is the next best player here, um, which would give me five wide receivers. Um, And so really at that point, I would just be looking to trade them um, so that's what I'm going to do. Honestly, that's like, those are the two guys I'm going to take. Oh my God. I hate your team. I do too. Absolutely despise See, it. See for me in a COVID season, if there was ever a year, I think where I want to go running back heavy, I think it's in a COVID season. Like I think re- receivers are much more replaceable and you can go out and find receivers that are going to give you anywhere from 5 to 15 points on a given week rather than uh, how difficult it can be to replace running backs. Um, so I'm going to go receiver. But, but right, I'm sorry, I'm going to go running back to load up. But like for me, I like Brandon Cooks, I think, is the number one in uh, in Houston Tyler Boyd, I think, is the better of the two wide receivers um, in uh, Cincinnati. So, like, the running backs that went after that were Philip Lindsay, like, backup running back. Matt Breida, backup running back. Tevin Coleman, backup running back. Like, you went with Antonio Gibson, which is way too early. Probably, but you. Oh, come on, dude! After round six, I'm I'm just going I'm going all upside here. With Darius Geis being gone, like, hello, Antonio Gibson. I think and Adrian Peterson is having flashbacks of uh, of Alvin Kamara sitting behind him. Now, it could also be Bryce Love or it could be a committee, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'll take the Antonio Gibson upside. Lat Murray, if something happens to Alvin Kamara, Lat Murray has shown that he is a top six running back if Kamara goes down. So... Yes, I will take that upside as well. Again, in a COVID year, why not swing for the fences? Let's go. Who do you got here? Uh, I'm going to take Tariq Cohen um, because he's a pass catching running back, and I think he'll be back to what he was two years ago. And no, that's not a Bears homer pick. Um, That's just a straight up. That's who I think I need to take there as a – he can be a bi-week replacement. He can be a scat flex play I think depending on what's going on and then uh, I need a quarterback so I'm going to take Stafford giddy up all right uh and then I believe you want let's go through the 11th instead so let's we're going to get through we're going to go through the first 11 rounds just because I want to make can we just picks. delete can we just start this entire episode over and you, delete delete you just my hate, team you, like it never happened I mean I just hate it so much we need this this is existing for proof that this happened that God, you, you were this like, bad at drafting yeah this is the thing though like you can be super prepared and just melt right like yeah, if it can like, happen because uh, you get to a spot and you're like what the hell I don't have I don't have a third receiver yet and I have one, two, three. I have five running backs. Um, I'll trade you one. And I don't have a receiver to to hold down the fort while Debo is on the pup for the first six weeks. So I'm going to go for a guy that I think uh, could be a top, I don't know, top 25 receiver. And that's uh, Sterling Shepard. And then by the time Sterling Shepard gets hurt, I'll have Debo back from the pup list. 
So true. we'll be all gravy. Gravy. It'll be great. And then, uh, oh yeah, Jamison Crowder, Target Machine. Yes, I'll take that in the eleventh. I don't even know who went in between. Daryl Henderson and Jerry Judy, uninspiring picks. Can we uh, trade teams? Just yeah, I love entire- like this late round receiver draft value. I, I like. Yep. Everybody watching any of my mocks, I think I've had either Sterling Shepard or Jamison Crowder in every draft. Like that's why I'm comfortable going as heavy and running back because these guys are there. Yeah, uh, honestly, we don't. I don't even need to take a pick here. Uh, okay, so like, if let's if transition gonna... back over then, and then so, well, like, actually, let's gonna... talk. Let's talk here for a second before we go back yeah, to the like, studio. What? If you were me, what would you have done differently? Because based on who was there, like if you like go back and recap it, like I took Julio Jones and Clyde Edwards Hilaire over Nick Chubb, Mahomes, Miles Sanders, Hopkins, Drake, Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler. Like I would have I would have quote unquote forced another running back instead of Julio. I think your team looks a lot better with another running back there. And then you have Cooper cup and Allen Robinson as your wide receivers. And then you're not I hurting agree. as much as running back. I don't, cause I don't think you need like the Allen Robinson flex is great, but then it's like, why bother drafting Brandon cooks or Tyler Boyd there? Uh, because you're Trade so capital. set. You're all. Yeah, maybe because, because, yeah. I think, because I think the value is so much higher there. Um, I mean, it is. You're just so thin at running back. I agree. I've also taken the approach that, like, generally running backs get hurt, and I can find a find a replacement at some point. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I like I was just basically taking who I thought was the best player available um, throughout, and ended up with all these wide receivers and no running backs, just because I thought the value was there. Yeah. Will that turn out? Maybe. So, right. It's like you force Miles Sanders there as an example. That's who I would have put there. I would have taken Miles Sanders and probably Edwards Hilaire. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, looking at this, like, yeah, I mean, that's probably what you have to do. Um, especially be, you know, because we're, we're covering this where the wide receiver values there in the mid rounds. So you almost have to force running back, running back, um, like Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders is is fantastic from the nine spot. But I, I also think you like your team just, more if you have Pat Mahomes and Edwards Hilaire than Julio. Uh potentially. Or Lamar or you know, or, or Kittle Lamar. there or something. You know, you could yeah, you could have gone I, Edwards Hilaire Kittle and then right, you could have gotten another trying. running back in the fifth. Yeah, only because I feel like I'm taking Lamar in every league. Um, like I, I was intentionally trying to avoid those quarterbacks there just to kind of see what would happen. Um, How'd it turn out? Oh, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, on that note, let's transfer back to the studio. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Here we go. Um, I think... Any, any major takeaways? I think like I want to be if to me, if there's a pick I want at all in fantasy football drafting this year, it's between, inside the first four. I, to me, it's the first I would say four for sure. Potentially five uh, if if the concerns of Dalvin go away. But I don't I'm not sure how much I don't think they are. I, He's I'm never not, played 16 games. Yeah, like. I would say the first four, and I almost want to put Kamara ahead of Dalvin now. I don't think he is in our rankings, but I would probably put Kamara in front of him. Uh, I would probably, because if you're there, then you just get any one of those last four that you're happy with. And then you get like, well, insane value, insane value in the second. Like if Josh Jacobs there is there at like he's going in at 24th overall on ESPN. Are you kidding me? That's that. That's nuts. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you're looking at Lamar yeah. or a tight end or Godwin or somebody of that caliber, which is still crazy, crazy value. Julio's going in the middle of the second right now. Like, 
again, I mean, the guy averages more than 1,500 yards a season. It's just insane value going in the second round right now. So I, I want to be as late as I can in like the first four picks. So I, I think yeah. I want like pick four this season. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I mean, every time we do this, I feel like picking towards the front. And I've always been a back half of the round guy uh, to start because I want those two two studs. But I feel like for whatever reason, it seems like it's much deeper than it has been in the past. Because, you know, just when you and me have talked, it's like, oh, you get to like rounds three and four and you're like, I don't want any of these guys. Yeah, pretty and much. Now, and now I feel like when you're getting into rounds three and four, you're like, all right, I'm like, there's a yeah, lot of Yeah, I'm excited here. about some of these guys now. Right. And I don't know. I don't know what substantially changed year over year, but Re- like, us doing research and starting a podcast. <laughs> well, I'm that might be part of it, but like there's just so like so many uninspiring names that were going yeah. in the third round last year. Like Damian Williams in our league won the third round last year. Stefan Diggs went in the third round. Uh, Devonte Freeman went in the third round. Carry on Johnson won the third round. Whoa. Like that's just, dis- that's disgusting. Like you don't want any of those guys. Um, like Mike Williams went in the fourth round last year in our league. It's Cause he finished so hot the year before. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just saying that for whatever reason, I just feel like there's a ton of value in rounds three and four where maybe there not necessarily was in the past. Um, and for that reason, I think it's more important to get three picks before it is to get two picks when that might not necessarily been the case in the in the past. Yeah. And again, I mean, it, it's every league's different, right? You know, some leagues have people that do a little bit more research. There's different leagues where quarterbacks are still kind of going early. You know, if if runs are starting and you're going to miss out on a position completely, then maybe you need to consider drafting that and just making whatever that reaches. So you secure yourself somebody, mm-hmm. you know, comparable. Um, not yeah, and, not saying that you should be reaching for quarterbacks because those guys can absolutely don't wait. Do that. And I think even tight ends. But like, if for whatever reason, fifteen receivers go in the first round, I, or you know, like if there's runs, be right. just be aware. Just always be adjusting. Yeah, you got. If somebody gets the runs, like you got to make sure that that you take advantage of it. Um, if so. You know, in our league, we we draw the um, we draw the draft order an hour before the draft starts, and, and it's traditionally, chaos. it's like everybody everybody gets their pick, and everybody's like, "Oh, I want to trade back." Like, I feel like that's the first instinct of everybody. Um, so I can't wait to get like pick eleven, and somebody being like with the fourth pick, being like, "Hey, who wants? Uh, I'll trade my entire draft to uh, pick four for pick eleven. I will be like, "Please, yes, please, give it to me." Yeah especially this year for whatever reason. All right. Now uh, we do have a little bit of newsy stuff. Newsy stuff. Oh my God. It's great. It's so great. All right. Um, Big voice guy. Big voice guy. <clears throat> oh, that's not a familiar. Oh, there we go. Nick Chubb is, uh, is, has been put into the concussion protocol. Are you moving him down any draft boards? Are you moving up Kareem Hunt? We are like 23 days out from football. Is that too far out to even bother? Is it bad that my first thought was I'm trying to make a head joke when you said Nick Chubb and having an injured one? All right. So Alex lots has of, a... Lots of bad jokes for me today. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I... I mean, I feel like you and me were both down on on Nick Chubb relatively anyway. Um, I I think those two guys are going to be relatively close in value by the end of the year and could both potentially be RB2s uh, when it's all said and done. Um, so I, from a con- like, does the concussion drop him down boards? No, honestly, I, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. I'd rather him have it now than week one. Yeah, well... It's, uh, do you, I mean, do you, do you think it matters? No, I've never had a chubby for him. So it doesn't really, 
it doesn't really affect how I feel about him. So with this, it's like it's and it's three weeks out. I mean, he could be well recovered by then. So doesn't it feel like, you know, it's August 18th. Like this, there should be football the season, going on. There's no football. The this, this season's just like hard knock started. Like yeah. nobody even knew it started. Um, it's just a real, just a really weird time. Like usually, like you're starting to get like, like we've even had our draft already because of people having kids and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. In in prior years, like there's like no, no buzz around this season at all. No. No, not at all. It's, it's weird. But I want to... There's a buzz around the Sackos. I, I can announce... <sighs> for the first time this week ever in our three months of doing this, we have gotten a download from the country of... Drumroll! Russia. From Russia yes. with love. I've been waiting for one. Well... Yes. Just uh, remember to put some tape over <laughs> your webcam when you get done <laughs> filming tonight. But uh, yeah, from Russia with love, we got some. We have some comrades from the old country listening to the show. So there's that. What's up, my homies? Oh my goodness! All right, um, I think Alex, or I guess homie, no s. <laughs> Alex, is there anything else you have to add? I'm going to transition to our social media page. No, I don't think so. Um, just again, thanks for listening. Um, and uh, like, I hope we help you guys win your fantasy leagues this year. Honestly, <laughs> you know, me, me and Jason were talking beforehand. It's like, can you imagine? Like, we should be crushing people this year with all the research we've done and and kind of recording some stuff for for people that we know and and our podcast is doing better than I think we both thought it would be doing at this point, which is kind of cool. Um, and then I, we do a mock draft and my team looks like it did. It's just like, all right, well, son of a bitch. Yeah. Got to bring you back down to earth every now and again. Um, I am going to plug the, uh, the all black Sacco, uh, on the, uh, social media page right now is in honor of Josh Jacobs. Who, if you go to the fantasy, no, 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 no. There you go. If you go to the fantasy football, Zachos.com, you'll see a lovely article written about Josh Jacobs and how he is the ultimate draft value, uh, this season. Go check it out. And, uh, I mean, we're sharing it on social media and whatnot. If you got any comments, if you have anything that you want to say, comment down below and let us know who you think is the ultimate draft value this season. If it is Josh Jacobs or if it's somebody else. Uh, that'll actually be fun to read and, you know, maybe give us somebody that we can write the next ultimate draft value piece about. So with that, follow us, follow us everywhere. We are at the FF Sackos on all social media platforms. Visit our website, the fantasy football Sackos.com for all of our latest rankings. Have a good night, y'all. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.